Um, and uh, here's uh, here's another case I kind of want to include. Th these ones are kind of interesting, and you probably will run into these. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Typically, you run into you run into these on tests. This is going to look slightly different. And what is the problem? Okay, it looks pretty good. It looks like kind of what we've been doing. And we always and let, the problem really starts when we're trying to figure out the vertical asymptote, right? That's when the problems begin, right at the beginning. Okay, because we know we set the denominator equal to zero. Yeah, pretty simple, right? Then we do 2x squared equals negative 1. No problem, no problem. x squared equals negative 1 over 2. Oh, wow, guess what? That's not going to work, right? It's no real number. So we can't even plot this thing on there, right? So uh, what happens is it has no vertical asymptote. So you can actually have a rational function that does not have a vertical asymptote. So and this would, this is it. And what is it? It's this plus. So that's what you're looking for. If you see that plus in the denominator, there's no vertical asymptote. Okay. And um, here we see that the horizontal asymptote is simply going to be zero, right? It is simply um, is simply zero, right? Y equals zero, right? This is higher than this, so y equals zero. So we know that there's going to be this here. There's no, or uh, there is no um, vertical asymptote. And so what actually what happens is that we still have the same sort of behavior, right? That's going along here, right? Um, oh, another thing too is why don't we do the x-y intercepts too? That's uh, that's actually pretty smart. So let's do the um, uh, x-intercept, right? Uh, of course is um, Right, when x equals zero, right? We set the numerator equal to zero. But the y-intercept, we plug that in, becomes zero over one, right? When x equals zero, so that becomes y equals zero. So obviously we have something going on here. Okay. Okay. So what happens is we have the same sort of behavior that's going on, right? But because of the squaring, what happens is this. It comes out, and just when it starts hitting here, it actually starts going there. So we get sort of this type of behavior. Okay, this is actually supposed to be symmetrical. Okay, and this keeps going out to infinity. So, it, whenever you see have a have a rational function and you see this plus down there, right, and a squared, so the plus and the squared together, we realize we cannot have a vertical asymptote. And what happens is it almost looks like your typical uh, rational function. However, what happens as we approach the, the middle is that rather than going all the way up to the infinity where you normally would have a vertical asymptote, it kind of just they kind of just join together, and that's the result of the squaring. Okay, that brings them together like that. Okay, so this is going to be this is going to have this sort of behavior. So these that's what you're looking for. If if you have squared in the denominator and you have a plus as opposed to a minus, right? And, and then you see when you and you know you'll probably r figure that out soon enough when you actually try and work out the vertical asymptote, you get a complex number. Maybe that's what it is. If you see a complex number when you're actually trying to calculate uh, the vertical asymptote, you just know that it basically is none, right? There is one that's complex, but you just can't see, so you can't plot it, right? So there's no vertical asymptote. There is a horizontal asymptote, which we can calculate, and then xy intercepts, right? And then we see that we get this type of behavior, okay? So uh, I think that covers the range of the type of rational functions you're going to run into uh, on, on any given test. And um, as I was saying, if you kind of keep going over these examples, uh, it's really worth your while to get a sense of kind of what they should look like based on what you've been given in the equation, because that's going to help you plot. Well, it's going to reduce the number of points you have to plot before you actually realize what's going on. OK, so um, those are all the different cases of the rational functions and how to graph them and how to find all sorts of information about them. And uh, so you should be able to handle anything that uh, gets thrown your way. OK, so thank you very much for using educator.com.